What is up? Whammo here with another game of Left 4 Dead 2. It is on No Mercy, and I apologize ahead of time. It's just No Mercy so good! We get so many good games on this map, of course. You guys know that because, like, 50% of my casts are on No Mercy. Which is ridiculous, I know. Uh, we are playing against a team. I'm not sure who calls the team, but it's we know it is Snow's team. Uh, they have beat us a couple times, actually through shenanigans or us fucking up or, you know, whatever the usual bullshit is. Coming into the first attack on No Mercy, the standard hit here. You have a spitter, you have a charger, you have a jockey or a hunter, you can hit in this hallway for a lot of damage. Now, you have to be really careful. There is that door laying on the ground there. Uh, this guy here is ghosting, gonna get pounced right there. Able to call that ghost and get a nice double charge, getting a spit here. Spit is gonna spread up front. I think Lewis took the spit in the face and stopped it, which is alright because they can't chase him. Now Bill's eating that death puddle. That's just fine. We did great damage there with that uh, with that little jockey spit separation. Uh, what I was going to say is that door that's laying on the floor right there, if you happen to land a spit directly on the top of that door, it doesn't spread, which is completely annoying, but something to be aware of when you attack up there. We did not have a boomer, so that door or that little breakable, uh, whatever the hell you want to call it, wall there is not going to be open. If you do get a boom off upstairs, that wall tends to be open more often. Uh, looking like we're sitting on a decent setup to hit on this doorway here. A nice little choke. Gonna play a little bit of bait because I know they're not gonna come out knowing we're up. Uh, it's really tricky to play this. I can bounce around a little bit and get shot or maybe pounce in there and hope for something to charge over him, but it's hard to call this, especially when they're sitting back like that. So I'm just gonna keep bouncing around, remove my threat from the scenario, and hopefully they rush out. Um, I did miss my guy there, but we are able to get a good spit down there on that pounce. Able to do a little bit of damage at the smoker and charger there too. Very good. Gonna slow him down. That's that's really the big thing here. Chipping off tons and tons of health with these spits. Very, very nice. Moving through the hallway. We should have a boomer this turn, I think. There is a witch up front. <clears throat> meaning they can either, you know, go through the house or go around the truck. Um, through the house would probably be the better option. Uh, considering you can cut about two attacks out if you go through. There's the boomer. Uh... Not too terribly good of a setup. We might be able to trigger the witch here because they don't know what they're doing. Not quite inside the aggro bubble of the witch. Still gonna try. Yeah, it's worth a shot, you know, whatever. They do get a little confused here, looks like. They kind of don't know where to go. Uh, with this witch in the way, able to get another hit in on that. Hopefully trying to make him shoot the witch, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen right now. There, they've decided to go through the house now. <coughs> Very good call. Uh, they're going to have to be aware of where they're shooting, uh, obviously, with the witch over here. Trying trying for the aggro. Just not going to happen, so I'm just going to bounce over for the car. Hopefully nobody shoots me on the way over here. Boomer does go with a nice spit there, able to get tons more spit damage. Spits are just wrecking these guys. Lots of horde. Car alarm has still not gone off. Going to be very useful for us, hopefully. Able to use the car to kind of dodge around with the jockey. Going to keep this guy down for a little bit. Give us our spawn timers back. Let us get another hit in, hopefully. Yeah. Which build spit on Zoe there. Probably not going to kill her, and that's not really the plan there. Oh, maybe we will kill her. Able to keep her down for a little bit longer. Giving us a little bit more chip damage there. Zoe does get up, of course. Only at half health. I mean, that's not really close. Managed to not set off the car alarm. I'm fairly impressed by that. Able to spawn the boomer, but not quite able to get in there. Zoe does pop me on Blackie there. Blackie, is that racist? Yeah, whatever. Get popped on him. They do have a pipe bomb. Not going to be a huge deal. All the way in the safe room. Able to put down a lot of damage, actually. Um, I don't remember what it was. It was quite a bit. There you go. 675-ish. That's a... Uh, that's a shit ton of damage, guys. That's that's a lot of damage for this first map, especially since it's like a four attack map. <clears throat> um, there was a charger that did go in the safe room right there, if you didn't hear that. they uh, Somebody charged in the safe room, the door was left open. Somebody charged in the safe room and it landed as the team switched, which does bug you sometimes into a third person. Uh, it's also similar to the way that the... Uh, if you've ever seen an infected Kappa survivor like a charger and be stuck, but it's not doing any damage, same kind of bug. 
Yeah. One of their guys now, crashed. somebody on either team is going to have to leave and rejoin. I would like it if the guy on this team, uh, Dom here, uh, left and rejoined as well. Just because you never know when this bug is going to come back. I mean, it does seem to kind of linger for some reason. I don't know why. It's the first time I saw that happen. So, I have uh, the uh, skin on my shotgun changed. It's a gold shotgun now. I don't know why. I just felt like changing it. God damn it. Don't judge me! Waiting for them to come back. I think he's back now. Okay. Should be. Oh, uh, the skin is a Van Helsing skin, by the way. The creator of that did a great job. It's good looking skin on that shotgun. Should be able to push in here. Now we expect them to have the same loadout. Always expect the other team to have the same loadout. Now the one dude did leave and come back, which would change the loadout. So you never know what infected he was when he left and came back. So it's something to be aware of. They may be missing something here. Or have something we're not expecting. The trick with this hallway, it can be done, but you just have to bait very carefully. Right like that there, Hunter kind of missing his secondary pounce, landing, ending up in the bedroom there. Maybe they should have gone in with the jockey on that, I don't know. They're able to bait the Hunter out. Bad idea for the Hunter to do that. They're baiting again, hoping the jockey comes out. He does, and it looks like he's just giving up now. Able to miss a few shotgun shots on him there for some reason. Just now we should be able to move in here. I see the charger coming. I expected him to charge me, but I'm able to get two swings on him as he chased after uh, Francis there. So uh, yeah, I guess that works. Uh, they maybe could have done a little better job there. It, it really is hard to call that bait. It's such a tricky little hallway to attack in. Doorway or wall, I guess. Their shortcut is not broken, of course, because they didn't have a boomer. Able to cut through the horde, we should be able to make it all the way to the end of the hallway, I would think. I mean, without them hitting, assuming we can split some horde here. Doing my best not to leave a lot of straggler horde. Now, I am shooting as much as I can, killing as much horde as I can, but I'm also splitting what I can't kill to get out front here. Very, very useful. Boomer is up there, not able to pop it as it came down. Would have been nice to do that, but it just didn't happen. Everything does come in on that. It's all staggered, if you notice. I've talked about this before. The staggered spawns, staggered attacks, not good at all. You need to have everything come in at once, and you have to be aware of when you're attacking. You have to remember smokers can in-cap almost instantly, whereas a hunter has to get to its target. So you have to take that into consideration when you're attacking. Not just the hunter-smoker, but I mean any combination, charges, whatever. Able to run all the way downstairs. Uh, there wasn't going to be another attack that we kind of expected that. We only got hit about twice. Able to level, well, I wasn't quite a level on that charge. Able to kill the charger without too much problem there. Spit does go down in the doorway. Not going to do a lot, actually. Able to severely cut their damage out of that map. Uh, like I said, it is a 3-4 attack map, depending on how you play it and whether or not you catch a bad boom midway through. Uh... Us. Yeah, we did kind of beat the crap out of them there. Like I said, these guys have beat us before. I mean, so, you know, anything can happen. You get a bad tank, or you get somebody, you know, pulled back at a hole, or some stupid, ridiculous crap like that. It can turn a game like this very quickly. Because that, that 25 damage you're getting off, uh, or that 25 points you're getting off your damage score isn't going to save you from, you know, a 150 point deficit you get for losing a survivor. Hey, hey, that's some Selena Gomez in that too. I do have my net graph on still. I should turn that off, shouldn't I? Because it's kind of intrusive down there, isn't it? I don't know. It's been out of the Coming into this first area, uh, a lot of people like to do the pull down attack. So when you come out of this area, be aware of where the smoker might be. Generally, they're on the stairs down there. You just have to be aware that there might be something down there. A lot of people also will drop boomers from the top immediately. Just another thing to be aware of. Ultimately, it's about listing here. You can pull this off very nicely if you're paying attention. Listing for your spawns. Chances are when you drop, they're going to spawn. Looking for spawns right there. Cutting the smoker down. I don't know why he was right there. What else is in here? You got a spitter up front. Jockey in the front as well. Jockey does land, but outside of the spit, not good for damage at all. There is one thing left. It looks like it is a charger. It does miss its hit and gets splattered all over the wall. That's going to give us an escalator, I imagine, run up to escalator run. What? It's going to give us a way to run up to the escalator without getting hit again. Should be able to check. Well, I guess I don't have to check up left. You get 1.5s here, so it's not going to matter. The left side of this area 
has tier twos more often than the right side. The right side has throwables more often than the left side. So it's a trade-off. If you know there's going to be a tank, maybe you go left. Maybe you go right. I don't know. Depends what you like to play. Able to get another pipe. The boomer goes off up front. Smoker in the back and Jockey in the back. And Spitter in the back. I like how they set that up. It just didn't work out for them quite like they wanted it to, I think. It could have been a very damaging attack, though. Just sometimes they don't work. We don't have any more infected or SIs up, so we can just run this next part. Now, very, very common tank spawns right here. Something to be aware of. There it is, actually, the tank spawn. This area does spawn tanks a lot, especially when you're rushing like this. Gotta find that molly. We do have two right now and two pipes. Uh, Morris does light a molly in the train car, just because we're so far out of position. And now we can push up to these tier twos here. Tier twos are going to seriously help us against this tank. It's going to give us a massive advantage, especially, especially since they are going second. Um, knowing where this tank spawn is and having that tier two in the kind of middle zone there is going to allow us to block that tier two. We're going to have, we're going to be able to get infected in and not allow them to get that, which can really, really affect how they play the tank. That being said, we did get our tier two. Tank is in the tunnel on the right, as you see by me catching a rock with my face. Didn't quite see that coming. He's throwing rocks at you. Uh, he is not lit. The fires were all used to just stop him from rushing in immediately, which is, you know, it's a trade off. I would preferably set up my position with a fire over lighting the tank with a fire. Still in the tunnel, expecting SI spawns to come in. Tank pushes in, spawns are going to be right behind him, looking for those spawns. There's a charger and a jockey up front and in back, respectively. Nice combination. The spitter maybe could have gone for a separation on that jockey over spitting that charge. Gonna be able to clear this jockey, I think. Yes, there we go. I'm gonna take it down from this tank. Just because he's right there. He was chasing me and taking lots of damage. Uh, if anything, that is probably preferred to him, like, running around and hitting random people. You know, sometimes tanks get tunnel vision. They get that... <clears throat> where they're following one person, you know, and they just have to keep hitting that one person. They're not looking around him, you know, and they're getting meleeed in the back by three survivors. When you're playing tank, guys, keep your eyes around. Keep, oh, keep spinning when you're chasing a survivor. Know where he's going, spin around, look around you, be aware. Just a huge help when you're playing tanks. Pushing up here, oddly enough, no guns on that table. I'm used to seeing guns there. It's kind of weird. I guess there, you know, a couple times there's not guns. Checking that back room when in reality we probably aren't going to need any throwables or anything. They do hit on this little, uh, this little doorway here. Again with the staggered spawns. Very, very staggered spawns. Had that been all at once, it would have been a very bad thing. Uh, but since they staggered like that, we're able to cut that attack down fairly well. I mean, we did take a little bit of damage from that, but not enough to really slow us down a whole lot. We can push to the button press now and get back into that room with the fires lit around us and protected from this event area. Uh, we're only down one kit. I mean, so it's we're sitting pretty right here. Uh, it could be better, but I mean, it's not bad at all. You've got, you know, three pills, two pills in that closet, or that little pill cabinet there. So, you know, relatively short map, lots of health, easy. Just gotta watch what kind of damage you take. Uh, you do, okay, I guess he does light that hole. You can light this hole and you light all around you up front, you're not gonna get any horde. Which will uh, stifle the first infected attack, if not just push it back a little bit, which is very nice. Looks like they are going to do a little bit of damage to that attack, uh, if only because of the kind of clusterfucky nature of it. Jockey does down Joe Bear up there. Uh, I'm not sure how he did that much damage to him. It might have been a lot of horde there. I did kill him over that little thing there. Did you see that? That was kind of cool. I don't know. I thought it was neat when it happened. I wasn't really sure if I killed him. Uh, we, the drop won't be a problem. Uh, they did waste all their spawns right there, obviously. So we should be able to get through here, hopefully put off a heal, and get outside before spawns come up. I would imagine, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> if you're worried about your spawns being up when you drop out this window or you're with a pub team, take the stairs. I mean, shit, it's... The stairs are not a good spot to attack on as infected, and chances are the people aren't set up to attack on it anyway, so I mean, it's really not gonna matter all that much. Uh, I'm really a fan of hitting charges with melee weapons now, but uh, sometimes when you get hit, you do stay down and you have to get back up. Yeah, the hallways leading to the stairs, they can be devastating for infected attacks, if they are ready for you to do that. But most of the time, the infected team is expecting you to drop out a window, especially if you walk into that room and then walk back out or whatever you're doing. Having throwables right here, very useful. No, assuming you get stuck up right there. Generally, you take an attack right there. It just happened that we didn't. But having throwables right there it can be a godsend. I mean, that area is so heavy in horde. But a very nice run. Uh, 
easily. Not easily. quite as amazing as the uh, first one there, but uh, there. definitely a, a lower it's damage too, considering the map. Oh, no, I think and having a tank cars. for that matter, I mean. Spit it a bit. Check your fire. Sitting on a decent loadout here. Uh, you have a few options being on Charger Spitter in this opening area. Uh, you can hit on the drop where there's a lot of rubble and crap like that to stop your spit from spreading and to kind of give them a little bit of ground, although it can be kind of a double-edged sword as in it stops them from getting out of the spit. But more often than not, it just causes them to, you know, be up on that little hump outside of the spit damage, which isn't good. <laughs> so, you can hit in a more confined area, uh, such as this oh, yeah. middle staircase here. It can be hero. very useful. You could also wait until this bottom landing, if you felt like it. But uh, I, I feel like the midway stairs is a little bit better of a hit, if you can pull it off. Now, with a team like them, uh, they have played this game together a lot. You know, they know what's going on. They're going to expect that hit, especially since you didn't go right away. They're going to know this is coming. And going Smoker first, I realize now, is not a good call right here. Because they're going to be able to split that tongue immediately, and now nothing else is going to be able to throw in there because I was a starter. But, hey, even now we still botched some attacks. It's all right. Well, Getting full zeros on that one. <laughs> Mostly my fault. Won't we all go again, we? Now they can check no, Molly so they can get whatever they need. Knowing that there's a tank there, they probably will search around at least a little bit. It uh, doesn't look like there's any tier 2's up left, but there were two pipe bombs up right, so I would imagine they'll go right if they scoped it out at all with the SIs. Now there's a guy running back into the back, maybe he found... Yeah, there must have been a molly in that long hallway back there. I'm not really sure. Outside of the safe room, you know, after you dropped off to the right, there's a long, like, hallway. Occasionally there's a throwable in the back of that. Where the vent's at, where you drop in, you know? Yeah. Going up left, uh... Kind of hard to hit on this when you're not really expecting the side. Looking for this boomer spawn, just not happening. People blocking my spawns every three seconds, I swear to God. Might be able to get a last second spawn to kind of slow them down, hopefully. Yeah, I'll be able to get one, you know. Not really exactly how I wanted to play that, but hey, it slows them down. They're going to stop and they're going to kill this horde. Knowing that tank's up there, they probably won't press underneath a horde. At least I wouldn't, anyway. They are still only on... Pipe Molly. I don't know why they went up left. Uh, it would have been a better call for them to go up right, right there. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, I say up right and up left. When you have directions on the map, when, when you're facing map forward, right and left is what the, you know, what that means. So even if you're as infected, right and left is still map forward, right and left. If that makes sense at all, it helps with the calling convention, makes things easier. So if I'm ever saying right or left, you have to be oriented map forward, and you, whatever's right or left is what I'm talking about. We're hitting right on those guns. Yeah. Now, we're on a decent setup to prevent them from getting guns. It's not a really high damage setup, considering the spit probably doesn't have anything it can land on aside from the hunter, but that's going to get cleared pretty goddamn quick. Um, oh, they know the tanks here. The tanks do tend to spawn later as the second team that goes, so... Uh, really, they're going to be a lot closer to these tier 2s than we were. And there's two more mollies. They do have two mollies and two pipes. Going to allow them to really, really press up here if they want to. Now, if we can just hold them here. Really, it's not stopping them from getting the tier 2. It's just holding them in that front area. Now, they should pressure tier 2 right here, I would imagine. Yeah, there goes the tier 2 pressure. Able to get a nice smoke in that spit right there. Beautiful, beautiful smoke. They are not in position to clear that at all. Going to hopefully down him. Yes, putting all the DPS we could on that one guy. Downing him on the tier 2. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Even though the tank did get lit, that was a supremely opportune time for him to push in. Able to pin Zoe way back in that corner. We do have build down right there. And now the other two are in a really bad spot. Tank is half health and on fire, which means he's not going to be too terribly hard to kill. But what he can do is that right there. If he keeps hitting Bill or Zoe, he can kill them. Even with that small amount of health. Looking for this boom spawn. Able to get a boom off mid-tank. Going to allow the tank to push in again. Hopefully get a few more hits off before he burns out. There he goes. Gets one hit. Putting down a lot of damage on this down guy right here. They are not clearing him at all of this horde. Horde does shit tons of damage to people when they're down. And there he goes. Dying right there. Gotta, gotta, gotta be aware of how much damage that horde does to people who are down. And not only that, but when the horde gets to him, it immediately hits. Especially when they're down and boomed. If the horde gets to him, it's going to hit him immediately. 
So if you don't have somebody on top of him meleeing and you've got 30 zombies running at him, that is a lot of damage that's going to happen to that guy. It can kill him pretty freaking quick, as you just saw right there. He was at about half health when that sword got there. And he he died in about 10 seconds, so I mean, there you go. Uh, sitting on three survivors now, we could be trying for tricaps. However, I feel like it's easier to hit for damage until you get to somebody who's slow. Once you get somebody slow, then you can hit tricaps, because... With three fast people, it's it's a lot harder to hit tricaps than it is with three, you know, slower people or one slow person. Someone to set the pace to a little bit slower. Uh, Charger does miss there. I thought he had landed. That's why I spit right there. But uh, able to get a boom off, throw down a few punches and a little bit of a jockey. Uh, gonna put a little more chip down. Uh, with the pills up here, it's not gonna matter too terribly much, but it is gonna slow him down a little bit. Maybe giving us spawns for the next staircase. Maybe allowing us for another opportunity on a tricap. Who knows? <clears throat> uh, there are throwables sometimes in this next area here. Uh, something to be aware of underneath that hole that you normally would light in the area over there, map right, where you wait for the horde to burn out. There tends to be a molly or a pipe bomb, something underneath that, just sitting on the ground, you know, as opposed to floating in the air. Which is what pipe bombs sometimes do. Uh, not a bad hit here. Uh, Smoker Jockey Hunter for a tri cap is not my preferred combination, but when do you ever get what you want, right? Uh, with a boomer in front of it, we should be able to pull this off. <clears throat> Assuming I can land two on this boom. Do hit the ladder. Gonna slow me down enough to where I don't get another person. Smoker does miss. Jockey Hunter going in right there. Looking for this tricap, and I'm not sure if it happened because I can't see the other guys. It does indeed go off right there. Uh, if anything, <clears throat> that tricap right there was extremely lucky. I would say uh, maybe 70% skill, 30% luck, but I mean... That was really nice. That is going to give us a huge lead. And it's probably going to kind of piss off the other team a little bit. Hey, we still have three more mats, man. I mean... <laughs> Now here comes the next map. This is going to be more of the deciding map than anything. Seeing as the game has started to skew towards us, when you're playing another team like this, after you hit this skew point, you probably won't last but a few more maps before somebody says, fuck this, I'm out. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just the nature of the game, and it's fine. I don't hold anybody to that kind of thing. Oh, that's right. I mean, we have kind of outplayed this, outplayed them this entire game, and it's been maybe a little bit rapey, but it, it's been a good game. What hole are you talking about? Where you drop down, and then you go the ladder, and the alarm cars. Waiting for their... Fourth, oh. I think maybe, or maybe we're just sitting in the safe room talking. Yeah, we might be just sitting in the safe room talking, which we do sometimes to do. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. Yeah. Everybody in. This first door, uh, the safe room door out into this area. There are 150 ways to play this. Uh, only a few of them really work very well, and it all depends on how you call the other team. Now here, I'm expecting this kind of combination. I'm expecting a spitter up above or a boomer up above, and probably a charger in that room. Now, we did lay down a little bit of chip damage on that charger. We should be able to kill it now fairly easy. Expecting this here. I don't know how the fuck he didn't hit me, but doesn't matter. Able to split that attack somewhat. Spit does go down in the back. Not on anything useful. Hunter is back there as well. I think somebody ran through the spit to get away from that. Very good call there. It's essential in that area if you that you stay with your team. You do not want to get separated right there. They can really fuck your round starting. Wow, that's fucking gay. Always full room of supplies right there. Uh, this garage door on the right here opens after you start the event, by the way. If anybody ever didn't know that. So if you do start the event, run backwards. Like, if you get one of those fuck you event start tanks, then you can, uh, you can run back there and there are occasionally mollies and... Uh, you know, pipe bombs, pills, whatever in that room there. Something to be aware of. Team probably won't hit unless they want to waste something right here. But uh, always be ready for it right there, especially coming out of that building. Sometimes teams do drop boomers there uh, looking for a separation attack of some kind. Not very often, though. Always pop your gas station. Always pop your gas station. I've seen that kill way too many people to tell you not to pop it. Uh, of course... If you're expecting a tank, I guess you could play some kind of crazy tank into gas station attack or some crap like that, which would be kind of crazy, but oh well. 
Boomer here. I'm expecting Charger up here. Smoker down below. Standard loadout. I always expect the Charger here. You should too. It's just the way you should play it. If you can bounce in and hit right to the right, you can kind of avoid this charge. And right there, there, he does kind of fuck up. Doesn't expect me to come in on Or her, I guess. I don't know if it's a chick or not. Able to cut that charger down. Expecting a smoker. There goes the smoke right there. That makes three infected. I'm not sure what the fourth one is. Chances are it's not a mover, though. It's probably a hunter. Smoke is dead. Yep, right there. Boom. It's funny, because I don't even remember that. <laughs> uh, opening the door. Coming back up, because I'm pretty sure we didn't open the pill cabinet up. Which, uh, not that we need it anyway, I guess we're all sitting on decent health, so it really isn't gonna... Jockey coming from behind! Not good, I am separated. Jockeys are so tricky sometimes to deal with by yourself. I'm sure you guys have noticed this too. If you do get the first melee on a jockey... Oh, Boomer missing his jump! Hitting his head on the top rim or hitting his feet on the bottom, I don't know. Missing his jump getting popped. Oh my goodness. Anyway, jockeys, so hard to deal with. If you... It, it's weird. Like, when you're a jockey, you seem to get meleeed all the fucking time. And when you're a fucking survivor, it seems like the jockey always lands on you. Oh, uh, we did get a tank right there. Uh, this area can be rough for tanks, but they do spawn, like, in the fucking sewer when you hit right here. So, uh, chances are it's going to be a mile out. It's probably going to go AI before it gets here. You can play tanks in the warehouse if there's no horde. Uh, if you're forced to play a tank and it's, you know, in here, it's not that bad, but... My, my friends here, my team, have told me that they really don't like playing tanks in the warehouse, so we're going to move it outside. Uh, seeing as the horde has pretty much subsided, I think it's only got like half a wave left, we can uh, we can light the doorway. Uh, when you do light that doorway for the tanks, make sure you put it in the doorway, because the tank cannot pass through there and come outside if the, if the molly is in the doorway. If the molly is not into that doorway, he can sometimes sneak by on the right, sneak upstairs, and come outside that way. The whole point of that molly is to cause the tank to go AI, though. Which I'm not sure... I'm pretty sure, actually, it happens this oh, time. Uh, maybe not. He is coming in by himself, throwing rocks. Probably AI. Uh, Hunter Charger and something else do go right there. Tank hits me while invulnerable. God frames and all. Uh, molly going down right there. Bad spread. Bad spread looks AI to me. Oh, maybe not. He is missing a lot. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know if he was AI or not. Yeah. Did miss quite a few swings there. Very hard to hit survivors on open ground with no horde and a tank. I do decide to go this way just for shits and giggles. I guess I wasn't thinking if the door was open. Very hard to engage four green survivors on open ground. Not something you want to do with a tank. It's just not good. It won't work out, trust me. Lots of supplies up here. Uh, we've got an extra shot and some pills and shit like that. Should be a fairly easy run. We probably will get hit on this next doorway here if I had to guess, maybe. I imagine it's something at this door. Fake it. Listening for the spawns. Not hearing anything come up. I'm very surprised by that, so it's gotta be here. Expecting it right here. Expecting a charger as well. There goes the pounce and the spit down on Dom up front. Taking quite a bit of damage and a down right there. Uh no charger yet. I don't know if there was one or not, but. I think that was only three. Was it only three? Is my counting bad today? I don't know. Whatever the case. A, a decent hit by them. Uh, if only because Dom just kind of derped his way up there, but that's all right. In the next area. Uh, technically, you could rush down the hole right now. Technically. That being said, it's probably not something you want to do, even if you're with your team or a group that's communicating well. Just because so many things can go wrong on this stupid hole. It's Ooh, just, balloon. sometimes it's hard to fall down it. You may be hitting on my drop. Expecting a hit, you can hear the boomer outside right now, or down below. So you hear a boomer, we light the hole. <clears throat> what we're trying to do is light the boomer. Uh, when you drop and get boomed, it's not fun. It's not good at all, actually. Especially if they have a spitter down there or a charger. Right, Both of which can move you really far forward and really fuck your day up. There's the Boomer down there, and the Spitter. Not fun. Not fun at all. Dom does split his way out of there. Boomer did go a little bit late on him, which allows him to get out of there. I'm good. Now, it looks like there's nothing else in here. That was, what, two? Spitter Boomer? Which means there's two left. There's the Smoker there. Nice. Able to pop him, and Jockey should be coming in, too. There is the Jockey, and Jockey just kind of floats there, because Jockeys are magical creatures. We all know that. That's fine. Able to go on the hole. This hole is always fucking just to do whatever you think is best. You have to kind of really play it by ear. 
I prefer to drop one person and then drop another person and see if they hit. Sometimes you will get a tri cap coming in, and I have been double capped up there a number of times, so don't be upset if it gets you, you know, a couple times. It does happen. It just really depends how they come in. <clears throat> Rushing up here. Uh, we did just wipe four of them, but they should have another person up. I would imagine here. There's the hunter. Uh, Charger does clear him with his little stagger thing, and I'm able to get a melee on him, but it's not. Oh, I am clearing the hunter. Very nice, but I am low health, and there's a Charger hitting me in the face. Able to clear the Charger and Boomer. Uh, in reality, I should have thought about that. Spun meleeed and just killed the smoker. Trying to get the shot off. Not going to happen being boomed up here with all this horde. Uh, kind of a bad play on my part, but thankfully my team was there to back me up. Going to allow us to move through this area. All the way to the safe room. Uh, there shouldn't be anything else up. They might have spawns like at the door or something. But it's not going to cause any issues. There's a jockey spawn in the back. Like I said, they may have had spawns at the door. In this area, though, it's it's a very hard area to attack in. I mean, you're not going to do a whole lot of damage here. And I have killed, like, singles or doubles right there. You know, whatever. Triples, maybe. If they're really low on health. But a full health team, you're not going to cap. It's just not going to happen. You can get a little more chip damage, but not a whole lot. If you don't kill them at the hole right there, you might as well just, yeah, say fuck it. <laughs> I'm not sure what their damage was there. But I'm not sure if it's gonna matter. What do you think they'll do here? Nice if we kill them with tank. <clears throat> Coming at this from the infected side, it is difficult, like I said, to guess what the other team is going to do. Yeah, like I said, there's left. 150 ways to do this. About three ways that are common. Uh, cutting out left is fairly common. Cutting out and right with one person is common. It really depends, I guess, how the other team's feeling. Uh, Got to play it by ear. Okay. Sometimes you can call spawns and maybe I'll go at the same time and hope for some kind of caps You know you really can try to set stuff up there But it, what it comes down to is how good your improv is with your team And sometimes you know it works flawlessly, you know We've killed teams right there just because of a really good first attack and random crap happening to go our way But more often than not they're gonna surprise you with something weird that you've never seen before because there's just so many ways you can go to that area that's, that's uh, they do take a little while at the tier 2 room, so we go. Oh, it looks like somebody might have AFK'd right there. Taking a little while at the tier 2 room, and now we have an AFK here. Yeah. Gonna give us a chance to get our spawns, and we don't have a spitter. Um, we are sitting on a charger boomer, of course. It uh, In this hallway, <clears throat> if you're sitting on a spitter, you would want to hit a little further forward in the hallway to allow for the spit to do damage. Uh, you know, by grouping up the survivors, getting them pinched into a corner or something like that. If you're sitting on a boomer charger and another mover, jockey, or smoker, in this case three movers, you want to hit the corner because you can separate them out, you can stop the fast clears, and you can keep them blind as to where the other survivors are. Key thing right there, boomers, you want to have the ability to separate. Which is exactly what we're sitting on. Hopefully we can pull off something nice, but in this corner, you never know. It is a very, I wouldn't say hard corner to do it in, it just seems weird sometimes. People are very ready for this attack. Absolutely ready for this attack. I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, somebody's having problems with their internet and it's a little bit laggy or something for them. Which is fine. I'm all about waiting for teams to uh, sort their shit out. Just don't do it every goddamn round. All right, We've played against teams before that they will have somebody AFK at the beginning of every freaking round for five or ten minutes. And that is ridiculous. <coughs> Able to sort his ping out. Now we gotta hit on corner here, we gotta go right here. We gotta get that boom off. Looking for that boom. Able to get some separation there. Smoker is still up, hopefully for some kind of defense. There he goes, getting the green guy. Very, very nice. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Able to get some decent separation there. Uh, not quite as good as I would have hoped had maybe the boomer landed first and then a charge into that. But in reality, it was still very nice. I'm not sure if the charger got melted or something like that, but uh, whatever does stop them up in here. Uh, occasionally you can hold them in here for long enough to get another attack, say, in the house or perhaps on the exit of or the house. The burger tank, sorry, not the house. The burger tank, you can get them on the exit or inside maybe if you get your spawns up quick enough and it's a good setup. Uh, not going to happen in this case, but it does happen occasionally, something to be aware of. Inside that building is kind of fucky with, you know, there's crap everywhere and it's, it's a little difficult to hit on sometimes. Laura's throwing in that hunter. Uh, wasting for perhaps a smoker. I do... 
A lot of people don't like this, but I do like dual support in this area. I think it can be very good. You can get a lot, a lot, a lot of damage with the Boomer Smoker, or I'm sorry, Boomer Spitter, uh, simply because they tend to pack back against this wall here. And if you get a good Boom Spit in there, you can get a nice stumble, and occasionally you can get a nice charge stumble on top of that, which can kill teams. They're getting a nice bunny hop boom there. Hitting that perfectly. Very nice. Spitter should go right there, pinning him into that corner, getting, I can't see, a few dings. Charger does miss, but that's okay. We do get quite a bit of damage. They're able to drop Francis all the way off, not hitting the truck. Key thing right there, not hitting the truck when he fell, but he did drop him on the angle of the truck and down to the ground, which does damage, you know, obviously. Even if you dropped him straight off, it would have done damage. Charger's still alive, uh, by some happening of a miracle. Uh, down there in the spit, able to get some crazy damage down there with all that horde and the charger and everything down there, putting down tons of damage on Francis, especially since the guy who's down there trying to clear him was capped. It just didn't allow them to get him up. That's why he died. So, so very much Horde and the Spitter. Again, on three survivors with these guys. They do have a significant amount of health. Now reminiscing about that boom, by the way, if you can't tell. It was pretty awesome bouncing off that vent. <laughs> on three survivors again. Uh, again, I will say it. You, you, it's hard to tri-cap survivors, especially when they're all green. Now, if you get two of them boomed and you have a tri-cap in, it is significantly easier. But, hey, it really depends on the team you're playing against. Sometimes people are really bad when there's only three. They get frustrated and flustered, and sometimes they get split up. Now, that's exactly what happens here. Trying to take advantage of that. Looks like we're going to be able to a little bit, uh, if only maybe to throw down a little more damage. Uh, probably not going to be enough to kill him. I do like how Snow shoots me through this uh, through these boxes here. <laughs> Very cool. If you didn't know you could do that, you can. You can, if you have a little vision hole there, you can shoot through those boxes. Spit able to go down. Charger is up. We are staggered 2-2 two and two on our spawns, which is very useful when you're hitting with three people. Or hitting against three people, I should say. Especially when they're splitting up like this. Bill is very low on health, and there he goes down right there. Able to kill that one guy at that event made a whole world of difference. Being able to kill that one guy at that event. Um, tri caps work well. But sometimes you're better off just trying to hold a team with three. If you stagger your spawns two and two, oh, man, sometimes nasty. you can pull it off, especially in high horde areas. But, uh, you know, that's something that you kind of have to call on the fly. It's not really something you can be like, oh, yeah, it works every time this way. It's just not going to happen. I do believe that is game. Uh, we're double their score now, and it's halfway through the, the campaign, so I'm pretty sure they GG out. Or maybe we play one more round. I don't remember. Fuck it, who cares? Keep playing. Hit tab. Hit tab. No. Hit tab, show me how people are here. I'm reloading. Oh, so they're all four of them still. I guess we're gonna play another round. Got a class in June. Gotcha, my one on um, with the uh yeah, with that tank in that area there, like I was saying about the uh about the warehouse, yeah, taking that tank in the warehouse can be touchy. It's only because that area is so heavy for spawns, and it's so heavy for horde. You have to be very careful to get not get boomed, rather. And if you do get boomed, you kind of get fucked in that area, especially considering there's a forklift in there, and you have a lot of infected spawns. You've got all kinds of spawns along the roof. You've got the ability to get on top of the shelves in there. There's just a lot of spawns, a lot of, you know, choices for the infected, which is something you don't want to have when you're trying to wait out a tank or when you're trying to kill a tank. Which is why the outside area works so well. When you're on top of that trailer, you've only got, you know, two or three spawns maybe down on the corners oh, of the trailer. Nice. That uh, looks like we were playing this. Smoker does go in the back. Hunter up front gets skeeted and a boom does go off up front. Not going to be a huge deal. I've said it before, with one person boomed on a decent team, it's actually helpful. Moving up, that was only three of them. Where's number four? I don't know, maybe somebody was number four and died. Don't know. Pushing forward. Uh... There do tend to be weapons outside of that doorway down there to my right. Uh, this time I think it was like the 1.5 sniper. But uh, occasionally, well, there's the AK in the other spot I was going to talk about. Boomer popping through the wall, hitting three of us, maybe? Maybe, I don't know. With the attack coming in, uh, not a great area to attack in, especially with caps. Um, if, you're, if you're sitting on a boomer and you have three caps, not an amazingly successful area to hit on. 
Especially considering how easy it is to skeet. There they were only on two caps and a spitter, so the spitter could have gone and tried to move us around and there maybe get a good cap. But it's just not what happened. <clears throat> I would have preferred they saved for the button press, which you can bait this button press, by the way. If you run up to it, run back real quick like you're running away, chances are a pub team will spawn and they will try to attack you. And you won't have to worry about the horde or anything like that. Something to be aware of. You can bait things like that. Very easily, actually. Even though there is a noise and a little shake when you hit it. But, you know, whatever. Clearing this horde out here. Something to keep in mind. These doors here, uh, a charger can charge through them after they've been damaged once. If they are intact, like if you manage to open them and not shoot them, then you can close the doors on a charge and it will stop when it hits them. Something to be aware of. If they're both damaged and you shut the doors on a charger, he's going to fly right through and pin you against that surgery bed back there. But uh, another thing to worry about is your your spawn distance here with the boomers. If you back too far up, you do open up the spawns on the two sides of this little doorway here. Like by the windows. You do open up spawns there if you back too far up. So if everybody is against that back wall, they're going to have spawns on this front doorway. Even if you have somebody in the closet. Speaking of which, the closet, if you're not sitting directly against this front wall, if you back up ever so slightly right here and keep the door open, standing right here does block the closet spawns, so you can have all four survivors shooting down this hallway at once. Just something to be aware of. Hallway's open. Uh, a lot of my team tells me that this way is better. We should always go this way, yada, 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 yada. Uh, <coughs> in reality, you probably should have just cleared an attack before you come to the elevator, so it's really not going to make too huge of a difference. God, I hate this elevator. I have so many bad memories in this freaking elevator. Is anybody, I'm sure everybody here has fallen through the floor in this stupid elevator at least once, right? Every, everybody's fallen through this floor, right? Like, not, if you haven't, if you haven't, then the off chance that you weren't here around the update time, maybe... Oh, I want to say eight months ago, maybe a year ago, maybe more than that. I don't know, my sense of time in this game is kind of weird. But uh, when they released one update, it really broke the shit out of this elevator. You would fall through it, like, every time. <clears throat> and most of the time it was, like, floor 23. So it was like, you're like, Aah! You know, on the ground. And sometimes it was the entire team, sometimes it was just one person. It was kind of ridiculous, but uh, you can fall through that elevator. I'm not entirely sure what causes it. Uh, I will say just keep moving. If you keep moving around, I've never had it happen while I'm moving, so... Whatever. Uh, this attack here. Uh, in order to cut this first attack out, you need to get somebody in this room to the left. If you get somebody in this room to the left and they put their back against the far wall, it prevents this smoker spawn right here. That could have been much, much, much worse had my team not been aware of that charger and smoker combination right there. But yeah, if you put your back against that wall, it does block the smoker spawn, which he is not going to spawn until the absolute last second, so if you block his spawn, it's going to fuck their entire attack, I promise you. If you can get somebody in that room, get their back against that wall, and push forward, you know, one at a time, you'll be just fine right there. And then you have to kind of play the next area by ear, you know, be aware of what's up and what's not. All the way in the safe room, no damage on this map, but this isn't a damage map, this is a kill map. Uh, in reality, chances are you're probably going to kill somebody on one of the two teams on that roof. Um, occasionally, you know, you won't. But uh, more often than not, somebody dies on that fucking roof. Uh, you can play for damage here, but uh, chances are you're either just trying to pick on one person or, you know, just kind of hitting for hitting, you know, whatever. Just to make sure that you beat the other team's damage. But in reality, you're if you get that good setup for the roof... You're going to want to hold it if you're at the elevator, okay? If they're sitting in the horde spawns and you see a nice setup that you really like, like you've got your charger, your smoker, and everything just looks beautiful, keep it. I mean, you're not going to get an entirely killing hit downstairs with that kind of combination, so it's just something to be aware of. Able to get a nice boom off there. Uh, not too terribly crazy about that first attack there. I do not like this area. Uh... I have said that a lot of infected spawns equals an easy attack and things like that. You know, it's easy to switch it up, maybe, so they can't guess where you're coming from. But it so happens with that area, just the way that they come into it and the way that the doors are set up, it is very difficult to maneuver and infect it around in there and get people away from other people. Just there's so much shit sitting around. So, I'm not really a huge fan of that first attack. I really feel like it just fails more often than it works, so... 
I really don't worry too much about it. Uh, most of the time it's just improv. Everybody just goes and you see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes you get some crazy crap happening. Sometimes it sucks. Most of the time it sucks, but something to be aware of. Uh, we were looking for an attack right there. Uh, the hunter does get immediately headshotted by Chase, I think. And my boomer just gets wiped out. Everything coming from the same corner <laughs> is not a good idea. Uh, chances are, if they're on HRs especially, that uh, they're going to melt everything that comes at them if you're coming from one specific spot. 101, yeah, man. She's pretty Left 4 Dead 101. Yeah, she's topless in every episode, no shit. That does let them hit the button, uh, with none of us up, obviously. Like I've said, the doors are key here. A lot of people like to close them and shoot through them for the first few horde, uh, first few, first few chunks of horde. I, however, prefer to keep them intact and close them when the first infected attack comes in. It has saved me more times than not, and it's just very, very useful. Look at me, spawns here. Able to get a charger all the way in there. I don't know why they backed up. And I got stuck against the door, because I'm an idiot. Stuck against the door. Do get a good spit spread. Uh, they are backed up. Now, this is a scenario I was talking about. You can get spawns against that door, if you were really trying for them. Sometimes it's kind of hard to do, but you can get spawns against the door. Sometimes it's very, very surprising to see a boomer pop in right there when you're not expecting them. You don't immediately pop it, and everybody gets boomed. It's something to be aware of. Um, I don't like putting people in that closet, by the way. Do not set one of your guys in that closet. Just stay back a little bit off the door when you're sitting against it, like Snow is right there. Ready? Stay a little bit back off your door and kind of off to the side so you can't get pulled out. You will block that entire closet spawn. And even if you're leaving a little bit of the closet open, it's not going to make a huge difference. Worst case scenario, you get a boomer spawn in there. It's not entirely going to wreck your day if you hear it immediately. But uh, if you're backed up a little bit or enough, you're not going to have any spawns in that closet. Something to be aware of. Now, I'm sure everybody knows, by the way, uh, if you if you hit this button and you clear the first horde and you take an attack right at the end of the first horde and you clear the attack, you can rush during that little dead spot in horde and the elevator will be there just about when you get there and you won't take another attack. Just something to be aware of, you know, if you kill all four of them at the end of the first little wave of horde down there. Um, I'm not sure how many people actually know about that. I mean, it's, I'm sure people have seen us do it before and try and do it. Deciding on a smoker spot, yeah. spot up here, coming from the affected side. This really, really, really depends on how the other team is playing. Uh, if you know how the other team plays, if you've played them a lot before, and you expect them to take it nice and slow and bait everything out, you probably don't want to do one of these first hits. You don't want to give yourself one of those... Uh, one of those hits where you're relying on a person to run up front without thinking about it and try and block a spawn that doesn't exist, okay? Because chances are a team that's aware is going to block everything, and they're going to be able to back up and split a tongue, especially if you're spawning right here or if you're over on the other edge where that smoker tried to get me from. Getting the spawn there, and the spawn delay completely fucks me. The point where you can't smoke after you spawn... <laughs> I spawned a little bit too late, in reality. The charger is still up, so he can play shenanigans. Uh, back to what I was saying, though. If you have a team that baits, you get a lot of baiting going on, you're better off waiting for the assured smoker pulls, like up here in this corner. You can get a lot more shenanigans uh, that happen when the infected team moves into the survivors, not when the survivors move into the infected team. Does that make sense? You have a lot more opportunity to move the infected into the survivors as opposed to waiting for the survivors to move to a certain point before you attack, which is key when you have a lot of baiting survivors. Now, that being said, we did kind of miss our opportunity. We didn't have anything up right there. And these guys are going to be very tricky about how they do this, I'm sure. You can shoot through these walls, guys. Be aware that you do have bullets that can fly through these walls. You can be shot through them. That's what I'm trying to say here. They're going to bait this. They know I'm up, and they know that we have a charger. There's no way we don't. Charger is just ever so slightly late right there. I had him set up perfectly. Ever so slightly late on the charger. I may have blocked his spawn by moving off this side a little bit. But that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, we didn't get a lot of damage. Like I said, not a damage map. Not a huge damage map. Just because it's so short and there's a lot of easy areas for the survivors, a lot of camping areas on this map. Most of the time that you spend on this map is going to be spent just sitting and waiting or baiting on the roof. We did manage to take damage. Oddly enough, I did not expect that. Um, which gives us a significant lead. I mean, that's that's almost a map fuck-up lead right there, which is huge. 
huge lead. Yeah, we only see one seven seven seven, huh? Interesting number. Yeah, but that roof there, love yeah, it. Time. Love that area. Uh, it's so fun to go through when you have a good team and you know what you're doing. So they can uh, toggle. Cycle. Cycle. There we go. <clears throat> Last map now. Uh, the uh, the roof hit up here. Uh, when you come out of this safe room, or you pop the door early so they can't cycle their spawns, be aware that you may actually take an attack. Sometimes, sometimes, albeit not very often, teams do attack right there on that door just because people aren't expecting it. It's not a great area to hit as infected. Not a great area at all. But sometimes it can catch you off guard enough to where it does chip off a lot of your health. Which, not that you don't have a lot of it on this map, but every little bit counts, especially when you get on this roof. Because there is... What are you doing? There's just not shit that you can do to the survivors on this roof, especially if they're set up properly. Uh, there's nothing up here. Maybe a charger spawn here. Is there a charger spawn? No, there's not. Smoker does spawn somewhere. Maybe down below or against that wall. But there's no charger. We were able to not allow them to cycle enough to where they did not have a charger. Hunter does come in there. I don't know how the hell I got that melee. That was just a cycle, though. There was a boomer over there. I just saw that. <laughs> Did anybody see that glimpse of a boomer? Kind of crazy. Uh, if you are sitting on HRs on these rooftops and you're fairly confident in your HRing skills, you can sit... I think we might do it this map, actually. You can sit 2 and 2. I would actually prefer that people sit 2 and 2 on this map. Uh, you can sit 2 one, one but it works a lot better to sit 2 and 2. What I mean by that is over there where Jobar is, there's a little platform. You set two people over there, and you set two people on this middle platform behind me. If we would spin around, I would imagine I'll spin around here. That middle platform that Domino's on, okay? Two there, two on the side platform there. Works great. You do block a lot of spawns, but you know where the infected are going to hit. Chances are they are going to hit on the people on the middle platform, because that is where they have better spawns. That is where the easier hit is. And being able to anticipate that, you can really kind of cut the attacks out quite a bit. That being said, you know, people do attack sometimes on the side one over there by Walrus. But it's not nearly as common. Uh, a side note, on this map, and on every map that has one of these little turrets, it is bugged. If you sit on top of the turret, no horde will come to you. It is a bugged area. I've sat an entire team up here before, and no horde even comes. Uh, that being said, don't please don't use it. Don't abuse that kind of thing. I mean, like I am right now. But don't set your entire, don't set your entire team up there. All right? It's just not cool. This game's already over, so I'm just sitting up here anyway. But uh, don't put your entire entire team on top of that, because it's just not cool at all. And sometimes it can kind of fuck you. Like, if you get spit on or if you get charged, you can get a seriously crazy scatter up here. I haven't had it happen to us, actually. Which can down two of you or three of you and maybe wipe the team. Uh, that being said, we are sitting with kind of a crazier spread here. Uh, a little bit higher skill of a spread. You have to be aware of all the spawns and everything that's going on here. Shooting between the smoker's legs and getting jockey. No noise on that jockey. And he misses the charge. He misses the charge. Oh my god, I didn't even fucking see the charger. That was... Oh my god, that had to be so irritating to that charger. So, so irritating. I have had that happen to me before. Where I am the jockey and there's a charger behind me and I don't even know about it. And he whiffs right off me. Not cool. Yeah, I, I, by all rates, I should be dead right there. That was entirely a huge mess up on their part. Not that it would have saved them, because I'm pretty sure the game's over. But, you never know. Would have been cool to have it happen anyway. Tank is probably just going to rush in. I mean, if, if I were tanking this game or like this, I'd probably just push in. Not really calling the SIs that are coming in right now, just because they're kind of random. Silly. Tank is just hopping around. Oh, by the way, I have seen down in that area. two or three bunny hop tanks recently. I don't. Th was there a new config let out that allowed people to do that much more easily? You know, obviously there's probably scripts that allow bunny hopping. I know that. I know that you can legitimately use bunny hop script, and it's not gonna hurt anything in the game. It's not gonna get you banned. Up for you but did somebody release like a? A script or something that allowed people to do that? Like they released it on a popular website or something? I'd like to know because I see it a lot more than I used to. Uh, first tank down. And that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's GG. I'm not. Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's entirely the score. Yeah, so. That's game right there. Uh, 
the horde spawning on this map. It's something to take note of. The way that the horde spawns on this map, it always spawns where you can't see, obviously, but the majority of the time it is on the bottom level. So if you can get your people in a place where you can hit the horde as it climbs up the walls, you can seriously cut the number of horde that are coming in on you. Uh, if you're standing up here, be ready for a smoker. They're going to smoke you off of this top platform. <laughs> Just so you know, if you're waiting this platform out, and you're standing on top of that AC unit, expect a smoker down below. Okay, it's going to happen. Pipe bomb going off and stopping me mid-jump. Tons of mollies, tons of pipes, burning supplies right now. Waiting for the next tank. <coughs> Joe Bear missing his jump there. Excuse me again for coughing. Joe Bar missing his jump there. And now their spawns are up, which means they're probably going to stagger on this just to be stupid, I imagine. Lots of horde coming in. There's the spit. Going to keep him down for that much longer. Charger coming in now. <laughs> like I said, they're just staggering. Stopping us from getting him up every opportunity. Now we should be looking at a second tank. Puma does go off before the tank. Not a really big problem, actually, because it really doesn't matter all that much anymore. But, uh... Yeah, this map, uh... As far as boomers are concerned, in this finale specifically, you're really not booming for Horde. You're booming more for visibility. Now, what I mean by that is, when you boom a couple people, you use that opportunity that they don't have outlines to cap the other two, obviously. Now, it sounds a lot easier than it is, but if you're booming to get Horde to get damage, it's not going to work on this map. Horde takes far too long to develop, and it is far too easy to kill. So use your booms on this map to cover your infected attacks. Boom first, if you can, or if you have a good, uh, you know, cover combo, or somebody's by themselves, you can, you know... Cap them, then boom, whatever works. There's a smoker in that area. Nice double light on this tank, taking the charge in order to double light the tank, which is kind of retarded, but whatever. Uh, God frames get hit again, go down. <laughs> tank is actually still full health, uh, so he's going to take yeah, 90 seconds to burn out, plus whatever damage they do to him, you know, we'll cut time off that, obviously. Joe Bar almost getting hit off the map there, getting up right before the tank hits me. And there he goes down right there. Oh, Joe just phony. barely lives with four health on the AC unit there. Very funny. Uh, should be seeing a chopper now at some point here. Reloading. Boomer's up behind us. Hopping off because I do not want to get boomed. Should I stay here or... I'll just get over here. That's pretty sweet. Looking for the uh, chopper to come in here. Uh, like I said with the horde spawns, they are always in giant groups on this map. I don't know why. I don't know why it's more so on this map than any other one, but it is. You know, it's been a while since I've been pinned by a tank up here. I wonder if that still happens. Oh, that poor jockey. Poor jockey. Yeah, the tanks seem to spawn farther away now. Or, if even at all. I don't think they're even... Where was the tank? Huh. Uh, they fixed the uh, thing where the survivors are standing on that far platform, by the way. Uh, if you didn't know before, you know, whatever, five months ago, or whenever they fixed it, the platform above where the button press is, the survivors were standing there before. <laughs> After you got in the choppers. It's just kind of a funny bug that they fixed and it's been out for like five years or whatever. That's game. There's there's no way they can win it. I'm not sure if they play it out or not. I think they might just jump off. But uh, we'll see. You need to play out or uh, leave now? No charger. No, or We do have a smoker. No charger. Uh, if you encounter a team in the meantime, from the infected no, side here, if you encounter a team that will open the safe room door immediately when you come in, like as if you're going infected first. If you're going infected first and the team opens the safe room door as soon as you come in and they're already like running or they're close to running and you don't have a spitter, you should definitely cycle for one. <laughs> if you cycle for, cycle everything. Cycle your boomers, everything. Keep your smoker, maybe. But uh, if you can cycle to a spitter, you can really slow them down here by spitting that bottom hole. It's something everybody knows, but I think it's very underrated when it comes to cycling infected here. If you have a spitter already, use it to delay. 
Because your team is going to need that time to get in to get your combination. We do not have a charger up here, obviously. But, uh, hey, it almost worked, right? Give it a shot. Did that on purpose, by the way. I meant to jump over and go down. Nope. Now just waiting. Waiting for them to uh, figure out what they're doing. Letting them settle in a little bit. Gotta get melee. This is an obvious pounce. And he doesn't melee me. How did he not melee me? That was such an obvious thing. He was reloading, obviously. But he should have had that melee. That was ridiculous. Should not have gotten that pounce at all. Uh, also, I should not have gone in because my team just now came up and I'm going to be out of cycle. Boomer sneaking up that ladder. Getting a good boom off. But like I said, booming for horde damage or booming to try and, you know, add confusion to it, not going to work. Booming is specifically used to cut out lines on this map. It really doesn't do much for horde. Walrus, if you didn't see what happened right there, the jockey kind of danced around that guy down there for a little bit. It was uh, pretty funny because they were both looking away from each other at every point, but yet they were right next to each other. <laughs> uh, chargers on this little back staircase, you will carry bug, alright? If you charge up these stairs, you're going to carry bug, which means you're going to keep carrying that survivor after you hit him against this wall here to the left. Uh, what does that mean? That means you're not going to do any damage when you land, especially if you die before you land. Well, you will do damage if you do land, but it's going to take a full, you know, 10 seconds or whatever the charger distance timer is. So, uh, most of the time, you don't want to just charge up these stairs. If anything, run up there and punch him in the balls a couple times, okay? But don't charge up the stairs, guys. Unless there's two standing up there and you can get a good scatter, it's not going to do anything. Looking for the craziness here, not going to happen. Not going to happen with anything like that. Boom does go off on the two on the far platform during that little hit right there, which does help quite a bit, like I said, using it to stop the people that are far away from defending the people you're hitting. Very useful, but there's just so much health. I and mean, it's just If you can't kill one off the bat on this map, it's kind of a hard map to do, actually, as infected. Oh, I'm boomer again, that's fucking ball. Dual supports, man. We're getting lots of dual supports right now. People like to keep the spitter alive a lot on this map, by the way. Uh, not something you should probably do. Yeah, don't keep spitters alive, guys. Like, if you're sitting down below on a bottom platform and spitting up to the top platform, because you're so pro with aiming your spitter that you can hit the platform every time, you know, that's fucking fantastic. Don't do it, okay? Spit for support. Don't spit just fucking randomly for damage, okay? It just doesn't work. There's no point having a fucking boomer here because they're piping the shit out of it. Oh, I'm making them burn pipes. Should be first tank here. Reloading. Would imagine, anyway, I'm pretty sure. First tank, first tank, come here, first tank. Where's first tank? Reloading. Oh, another thing I should mention uh, smoker holes. I feel like people are far too accustomed to using smokers down in these low areas trying to pull people off pipes or ledges or things that they're going to be on top of. I would much prefer seeing people use smokers offensively like they normally would, using them as a cap, okay? It's going to help you a lot more than trying to get that random pull, because the random pull is based mostly on luck and stupidity of the other team, alright? If a team is pretty stupid and you get to this point and you're not beating them, there's something wrong, okay? Now, that being said, I have run across a pipe and been pulled off of it a number of times. You know, I'm pretty dumb when it comes to that kind of stuff sometimes. But, uh, something to be aware of. If you're using your smoker like that, maybe you should consider using it more offensively. So, uh, supporting your team, you know. We did get a guy down down here. Gonna boom him. Very key thing right there. If you get a guy that's far away from the other infected, something that seems so obvious as booming them sometimes escapes people's minds, you know. If you can boom him, get a hunter on him, kill him, whatever. If you can kill your separated guys, it makes... And it just makes the game a lot easier. Tank is in there now. Tank is very low health. Probably not going to last to an in-cap, no. But we do have a spitter there as well, and a boomer. One time where you like dual support right here. <coughs> I'm looking for that spawn. Able to get a nice full, and now i got to climb up here to get this boom off. It's probably for the best that I did this, because he does die. 
So, and it does knock Zoe off the edge there, just out of sheer stupid luck, and Blackie jumps off the edge. Why do I keep calling him Blackie? I'm sorry to anybody who might be black watching this channel. Uh, no offense to anybody like that, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> he, uh, jumped off the edge. There was pretty much no chance there was going to win that from about the last round there. So, uh, yeah, that was my game against Snow. Yeah. Like I said, they beat us before. It was very close, actually, the last few times that we've done it. Uh, just played a good game, I guess. That was it. Uh, I am Whammel. I will see you.